honestly, that was the hardest part. To me, writing the music was healing. Like after you accept, I can accept that I'm the damsel in distress, right? I can ex also accept that I'm an innocent bystander to some evil thing that has happened and hero comes in and saves the day. When you address the fact that you're actually the villain, like that's difficult. Be finish let me finish talking let me get this off my chest recognizing that in some cases not all but in some I was am and probably will be the villain in my life um was sobering but I think the Lord has walked me through a lot of that um with the music he's allowed me to have the music as a way to heal. I think the other day I started listening to it again and I was like, okay, maybe I would want to lean in more, maybe, I don't know how I want to say it, but it's like kind of like slight adjust. Man, this is like a super vulnerable song and so I'm grateful that you did it. And then the way that you scored it, I feel like it just added such beauty. Like I'm literally like a few seconds ago, I heard more and I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. I know we re never really talked about like what you thought when you heard it, even like, yeah, like all the thoughts. Like, what did you think? Even for me, even I did kind of give you a disclaimer, like, it's yeah. different. Right off the bat, I felt like very intrigued. I connected with immediately was how much of a story it is. And um, the talking, the inner, the inner you talking to you um, definitely resonated with me. And that's why, like, there was a moment, it felt like I was scoring and not like, you know, especially in the worship world, like sectioning off things and here's a build and here's, but it's just like everything you were saying was, I just like had to treat that moment. That's kind of how I approached the whole thing. I could tell it was like a inner journey type song and it was eye opening to see that. Like I didn't expect that either. If I'm honest, I've, I think I've loved people before and I wasn't so great at loving myself. And because of that, I would put myself last. And I think that I'm learning how to balance it out because what I realize is that if I'm not good to myself, I'm not gonna actually be good for people. Um, my friend was just saying, he was like, yo, I feel like this is like almost setting the stage for people to be prepared for you to even mm -hmm. have a different sound. So I wanna, so that's how I'm gonna do it first. I'm gonna try to stick as closely because I know I sang exactly what I wanted to sing. Right. And I almost wanna capture like that same, like, I don't know that same heart. Yeah. I wish you were see-through. I wish you could see me. Wish I could see you. Oh, I wish that I could free your mind. And sometimes I wish that we could just rewind time. First thing for me to talk to them about. Your music? You love your music. Oh, God. Here I am. Hello, you worked on this for six years. Mm. I think it's weird to walk in there with shades on. Like, no. No, I need them. <laughs> Yo, I can't even do it. I mean, I know for me, when I was going through my depression, I leaned heavily on my mother. Um, and I didn't even verbally say it, you know, like, I need help. You know, it was just like she stepped up and stepped into the place of like, oh, and I think that there's a way that our mothers just know. Our mothers just know because I think they've gone through it and walked through it themselves. I'm just trying to cope with the impossibilities I wish were possibilities. 
I don't think that I was a great mom during that time. Um, I think when the kids came around, I would just act like everything was fine. Um, I also found myself trying to be out of the house as much as possible to hide it. Yeah, I think when you have a strong support system, the kids don't feel it as much. They don't feel the, like, the shift as much. But I think there was definitely a noticeable shift. I don't think I was the best mom at that time. I don't think I was the best wife. I don't think I was the best friend or anything. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this one. Um, like what it means, especially into Still Alone. I think right. what's funny is that like choosing myself is like definitely me talking to me and me having my moment. And I, I feel like people would be like, wait, what's going on? But I think most people can understand that. I do feel most vulnerable about Still Alone and I don't even fully know why. But I think it's probably because I'm around people all the time and I think that I have really good relationships with people and I can connect with them. And so to still kind of feel alone, even with the people that you're closest to, is kind of um, sad. The alone thing is kind of like, like being on a platform or performing or being, you know, at church just surrounded by like the congregation. It's so real to like, the still alone thing is like, and accepting and being okay with that after you're off of that, after you're gone, after you're back home or in your bed or wherever. It's like such a raw thing and real thing that I feel too at times. And you know, it's cool that you're accepting it and like presenting it as a song and showing people that you feel like that sometimes. I'm a vault, keep it closed, hide the pain so nobody knows. Smiling and showing my teeth, I'm just deep in the misery. I ask that question a lot. I'm like, Jesus, why? Like, why? Why do you love me? Why do you want me? Why did you choose me? Why did you bless me with this? Why did you give me these children? Why did you put me in this life? Like, I could be anywhere else, and it's nothing but, oh, you love me. There was a moment where I felt like I was unraveling, a moment where I felt like I couldn't even recognize myself. And I remember I was talking to my therapist. I, it had dawned on me, like, literally I felt like the Lord like broke a hole in my ceiling and shined the light down on me and was just like, Naomi, I love you. Naomi, I love you. I just love you. And me at the moment where I felt like this is the worst that I could be. This is the most unhinged and un out of control I could ever be. I felt the overwhelming love of the father. And I remember just sitting there telling her, I'm like, Jesus loves me. Like God loves me. God is telling me that he loves me. And I couldn't say anything else except that is what I'm sure of. Like, I'm not sure of anything else. I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this. I don't know if people are going to love me. I don't know if my children are going to look back at this time and be happy or, you know, disappointed or feel like they need to go through years and years of therapy now because of what has happened. But I do know this. I know that God loves me. And that, this journey has been me accepting that and believing that and and knowing that from the bottom of my soul i'm not confused about that one thing i'm choosing happy the real me i'm choosing the freedom i feel when i look in these eyes yeah i'm choosing myself took a long time but I'm choosing myself. I've been able to see the evidence of God's willingness to take time with me. That in the moments where I feel like, child, toss me out. Like it's literally, I'm on my last leg. I'm on like the last string. And God is like, no, I still want you. Like I, I actually laid down my life so you can have life.